Hi, my name is Dominic and I'm a business solution consultant at Comorc. Today, broadcasting directly from my house, I'd like to say a few words about digitalization in wealth management, since I think right now in coronavirus times, it is more important than ever. Firstly, I'd like to talk about millennials, people born in the 80s and 90s. They are taking a bigger and bigger share of wealth management market and they are especially technology oriented. Even so, the older generations like Generation X or Baby Boomers collectively still hold most of the wealth. And the question is, could too much focus on digital channels at the expense of personal touch can alienate older clients? And how actually do wealth managers strike the right balance between them? Well, working for Comark for several years now, I've seen multiple cases where financial institutions were afraid that digitalization would weaken relationship between customers and advisors. In my opinion, the introduction of any new technology at a bank may serve one of two purposes, to help an advisor or to help a client. And unless helping one group does not harm the other, it's all good. To give you an example, some companies, and these are not only from our sector, decide to automate customer service so much that before you find some contact info, be it in email or a phone number, you have to go through multiple steps and confirm that your problem is not on some FAQ list. I personally hate it as a client, though I believe it's a cost-effective solution for a company. The other thing is, that banks and financial institutions are rarely innovators compared to other sectors. They are rather followers who take the tech from consumer technology and introduce it to banking. Therefore, wealth management clients who are also consumers in various other sectors, they already know what the technology is and how to use it. So, if the institution addresses some problem with the new technology, both younger and older clients almost certainly will know it and they will use it. The only thing is to make sure it adds value to your clients. And now, let's talk about automating the client experience. Wealth management companies are embracing technological innovations such as natural language processing, voice assistant, chatbots, gamification, predictive data analytics, artificial intelligence, and in some cases even augmented and virtual reality. But which innovations are actually most likely to succeed? Well, I'm not a wizard and I can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but I believe I have some understanding of the mentioned technologies and I know which one of them actually have a great potential in wealth management in the closest future. Apart from AI, which rightfully in my opinion steals the show these days, I see great potential in gamification combined with loyalty in wealth management. The other day I've heard this great perspective that clients do investment and wealth management because they expect rewards in the future. For those rewards, they are willing to freeze some of their money now, hoping for more later. Although wealth management is all about rewards, surprisingly, investing money feels really unrewarding most of the times on a daily basis. So I believe it's a great idea to implement those micro rewards that gamification or loyalty provides to you. How much cooler would it be actually to follow recommendations if you get some perks for it right now, not later? That concept of gamification and loyalty is nothing new in other branches of banking and services in general. So it would be expected to fill that niche in wealth management as well. It is proven that clients who use such programs are more involved and have stronger relations with the brand. And when, if not now, we would need some stronger relations. Since we've already discussed technology from the client perspective, let's talk about automating the advisor experience. Wealth management companies are also using technology to make operational processes easier and faster for their advisors from prospect management, customer due diligence and account opening, to portfolio modeling and asset allocation, to order management and reporting. But now the question is, 
which of these technologies are most successful at helping advisors become more and more efficient. When discussing new technologies in wealth management, we usually tend to forget about advisors. I see that sometimes banks are interested in providing the absolute minimum for their employees, forgetting that productive advisors means productive and happy clients most of the times. Financial companies should treat their employees as they were the first clients in the chain. By doing that, they should make the, their work more efficient and less repetitive. New technologies can really do that not in five years from now, but today in 2020. I believe that AI is the best means to do that. These algorithms can help advisors organizing the work, for example, by prioritizing clients, managing tasks to do, or helping with recommendation of new products for the clients. AI also can be really helpful for advisors when implemented in client channels as well. Well-functioning chatbot would ease advisors' work because client would get answers to simple questions right on without reaching to human advisor whatsoever. Advisors would still be there for complex problems. And actually, that's the example how technology would supplement but not disrupt the relationship. It's a win-win situation for client, for the advisor, and finally for the institution itself. And finally, I'd like to say a few words about robo-advisors, since they are a great example of processes automation. What can traditional wealth managers learn from them? And should they treat them as a serious competitors who will continue to take a larger share of the market? Well, robo-advisors have been around for a while. They grow, but not as fast as expected. Right now, they are facing multiple problems of expensive client acquisition and marketing costs. They don't have such credibility as banks or traditional wealth managers yet. Because of that, I'd say that the first thing that banks should learn from robo-advisors is that it's hard to get a new client even if you have new cool technology. So don't lose your clients would be my first advice. That being said, I think there is a place for both robo-advisors and traditional wealth managers on today's market. The other day, I wanted to invest some money in my bank and called them asking what kind of proposals they have for me. I was told that the only way to find out about them all that is to uh, meet them in person in one of bank's branches. Of course, it's now months from that conversation and I still haven't done that yet. Well, I guess that the lesson I've learned myself is that convenience is sometimes more important than money. Wealth managers should make everything extremely accessible and remote for the client's satisfaction. And this is something to learn from the best robot advisors out there. They would still have that advantage of face-to-face -face meetings when required, which usually robot advisors don't have right now. Overall, I think that traditional wealth managers are in a better position in that race and it's their job to keep it that way. Yet, robo-advisors are at the close second. We could see with coronavirus pandemic that traditional wealth managers branches can be closed overnight. This puts companies who have digital client channels, hybrid or robo-advisory at a pole position. Let it be a reminder that the only constant thing in the world, including wealth management, is change. Thank you all and good luck.